I need us to remember a little bit of the tools that we set up when we did mirrors. When we did mirrors, we had some boundary that we were going to consider here, and the boundary was the mirror itself. Now the boundary is the transition from one medium with index N1 to another medium with index N2. The rules, uh, how to use these equations, go right back to how we did mirrors. We have to set up a sign convention. Some numbers are positive if things are on one side, and some numbers are negative if things are on the other side. And we need to define which side of the lens or the surface, the, excuse me, the refracting surface is positive and negative. So here's the sign convention for refracting surfaces. And here's a warning. It is the exact opposite of mirrors. Okay. So if I place an object over here, and it's the light is now going into a refracting surface, P is what's called the object distance. There's almost no exception to this. There's one exception. But this number P is always a positive number. That's a lot like the case for mirrors. The really, really big difference for refracting surfaces compared to mirrors is which side is the so-called virtual side of the, the boundary and which side is the so-called real side of the boundary. Remember for mirrors, this over here on the left was the so-called real side. In other words, for mirrors, we really expected light to reflect back and come back in the same direction as where the object is. For refraction, we don't really expect that to happen. We mostly expect light to transmit on through. Although it bends, it refracts, it is transmitting. So we expect the light to be over here. Consequently, this becomes the real side. The real side is the area where we expect the light to go. Now, most numbers that are on this side are positive, and most numbers that are on this side are negative. The only exception to what's negative is this number p. p is almost, almost always positive number. So first rule for how we will handle this sign convention is that p, the object distance, is a positive number. Second rule is the real side is over on the right, virtual side is over on the left, no matter what kind of surface we're talking about here for, for this refracting surface. Is it bulged out or bulged in or whatever? This is the real side. Now, this distance i, which represents where is the image going to be created, so we imagine light refracting and we see the light coming over here. This image distance i is a positive number if we get what's called a real image. In other words, the light rays really come over and converge to some point. It's a negative number if it's a virtual image. In other words, the light rays appear to come from a point of focus, but in fact, the image is over on this side and there's no real focus at all. And the radius of curvature for this surface has a sign as well. In other words, it's positive or negative, depending on whether the center of curvature, that's the point from which you would draw all these little radii. If that center of curvature is over on the real side, then r is a positive number. And if the center of curvature is over on the left side, like in this picture, Now the center of curvature is over here, and so the radius in this case is a negative number. So if I contrast these two examples, in the first example, P is positive, R is positive, I is positive, whereas in the second example, P is positive, R is negative, I is negative. Now I've sh sort of drawn the image and you can see where I is positive or negative based on where I drew the image. In this case, the image is a real image. The light rays actually converge. In this case, the image is on the negative side, and the light rays don't actually converge to that point. The light rays keep on diverging out, but because they diverge out even more, if I were an observer on this side, I would think that they converge from a, a point back there. So that's why we call this a virtual image. There's no actual convergence of light rays. There's just a point where light appears to come from. You can see that i is negative if I draw for you where the image distance is. But the whole point of our exercise for today is to learn to calculate what i is, given all the other variables in the problem. There's another example we can consider where light actually starts from a high index area. And I put my object out there in the middle. This might be like the fish in the fishbowl before. 
light rays are coming along and refracting at the surface and in this case P is positive, R is actually negative because if I expect the light to refract and end up over here, then this is the V side, this is the R side. Everything on the V side, like radii and images, would be negative. Everything over on the R side, like this image I just drew here, would be positive. Again, you don't know if I've drawn this correctly or not. I'm just asking you to accept it, that I is over here on this side um, for this particular diagram. But our whole goal for today is to be able to calculate whether this is true or not.